1962 fake tone six transistor AM radio transistor pocket radio this is a repair attempt by a younger gentleman he uh, I've worked on stuff for him before that he couldn't quite get to the bottom of and he uh, I, I my hat is tipped that he would actually try and dig into a small transistor radio like this because these are not for the impatient so I think I believe what he said was that a transistor was getting hot and he removed the transistor or something like that and when I was growing up I would work on this stuff with a neighbor who worked for Magnavox Aerospace and that's where I sort of learned most of this stuff from. Well now what I do is I just ask him to drop it off and I make a video on it and that way everybody gets to learn from whatever's going on here. So this is a real tone model TR8611 and we'll start with a good visual inspection. So what I see here is it looks like several of the electrolytics have been changed and I'll have to just verify that those are put in with the negative on the correct side because these germanium transistor radios that use a, a positive ground uh, can get confusing. It looks like there might be one here that has not been changed. And I noticed that this transistor here is not soldered in. So the first thing we might want to do is just pop that out and stick it in the little M tester. I'm going to start by putting a mark there so it's easy to know how it came out. Assuming he got it back in right. Looks okay. So it goes collector base emitter. So, collector base emitter. So, the one with the thing on it is the emitter. Soldered the transistor back in. I hooked the speaker. I never liked those headphone jacks. I hooked the speaker back up. I got my little battery pack here. There's a video I made where I talk quite a bit about this battery pack. It's just an analysis of a Soviet radio. I think I'll tack that video onto the end of this one because I had some questions about this battery pack. I got my milliamp meter here. I got a current limiting uh, light bulb. This will limit us to like 70 milliamps. And let's see what happens here. Well, let me short this first. So I get a full light bulb and I get 118 milliamps. So I was a little off there. Okay. Try and get a bite on this with the wrong. All right, let me get the right. Well, it looks like we have uh, 1.5 milliamps draw. and absolutely no sound from the speaker at all. I got a real voltmeter here. We'll do analog today since we're using this one for current. And I got the schematic here. So we'll start by checking. Now keep in mind when you when you set this up you connect the positive as your ground to the positive, okay? Then you're measuring with the negative. That's one way to do it, or you could flip this around, but we'll do it this way. So we should have, on the output transformer, we should have nine volts, and then on each side of the transformer, we should have nine volts. We'll start there because with 1.78 milliamps draw, it's almost like the output's not working at all. So here's the output transformer. So right there we have 9 volts. This would be one side of it. We have 9 volts. 
this would be the other side of it, we have zero volts. So what I'm measuring is I'm measuring here and then here and here there. So why are we missing nine volts here? Is the wire not soldered in there? Is that it right there? Yeah, so looking at this, we have nine volts here, which are not, it's not what I'm looking for. I want to see nine volts. Here's a center tap, so this should come from the battery. They should have nine volts here and here, and I don't have it. So I wonder if this is the transistor that was shorted and it was causing it caused the transformer to burn open but also even with only one side I should be getting some noise through there so I should have some bias See what I got here. Let's go down. Let's go down to one volt because I should have about what 0.1, which it looks like I do. That's a 0.3 scale. Same thing about 0.1. A little bit less. There's a fo uh, there's a divider here. This is the bias. What this does is it sets up to sort of a a voltage just to keep the transistor barely turned on so it doesn't distort. And yeah, 0 0.1 volt, 100 millivolts there, and then. It looks like the emitters go to ground through a 10 ohm resistor. Alright, well this gets a little bit more interesting. Now I'm back on the driver transformer. And you can see we have 8.5 volts going into the driver transformer. 7.8 on the collector. I come over here, I measure this. So here's the driver transformer, here's the secondary, here's the primary. I have uh, about 8.5 volts there. I go to the other side and I have zero. So it's like the driver transformer is bad. The primary of the driver transformer is bad and one side of the primary of the output transformer is bad. At this point, what you do is clean this off and put an LM386 module here. Let's take the signal tracer and see if we're getting anything from the front end. In fact, where's the detector diode? It's right there. Could just take, take it right off of there and we'll see if there's any... It does not appear to be. Still got our 1.79 milliamps of draw. I'm doing this right. Well, there's no no nothing from this radio. And with you 
United Healthcare, you'll get more. Annual enrollment okay. is over 15. I have it coming out of the converter. Today. With the United Healthcare Medicare Advantage plan, you get more from your Medicare dollar, including better than ever dental, vision, over the counter, and, and drug coverage. Call United Healthcare and pictures all the time, and they tell me you're not offering, you know. I say, yeah, because nobody has yet proven to me that it's going to be bad for your health. But being a person, when we're talking about pH, we're talking about So the very end, happens within the church. For that to happen, it's worse on days when the air quality is already bad. Longtime KCAL business reporter Alan Mendelson has died. He was a fixture on local TV for almost two decades, was best known for his Best Buys segments, highlighting consumer deals in clothing, electronics, and other items. In the early 2000s, he moved to Las Vegas and started a television production, marketing, and public relations firm while hosting infomercials and other media segments. He passed away last week at home. No cause of death was given. He was 70 years old. He got his booster. 10.20, time for a look at your money. One movie at a time, Australia is building a reputation as Hollywood. Next installment in the planet of the... This transistor is not working. ...subsidies. So... It comes out of the converter into this transformer. Where it was loudest was going into this transformer. Then it's it's quieter coming out of the trans transformer into this transistor, and then there there's no gain here. So oh, let's see what we can see here on the schematic. Cheesy to the max video. So I was picking it up really loud going in right there. And then you can hear it right here on the base. And then you get no gain onto LA's morning news. So that's the collector. That's the base. Turn this up. To enter the win, Wallace wins in the courtroom. Four. alarm system to the monitoring center today rate starting as low nine per month we provide So there's there's no gain in the IF because this is the output. Reaching the unreachable, as we hear from Heather Jordan, our KNX here of the week, and his big our help homeless hope. They are quite the pair. Raphael Stoneman and his dog Leo are helping. That's going into the base of the first IF. Through the Gold Coast better. This is coming out of the last IF. These freaking transformers are starting to go bad too. The capacitors in these transformers are starting to fail. And yeah, you can redo them, and you've seen me redo them if you follow these videos, but it's a lot of effort. And with open power, tra without open output transformers. Next, 
who is 180 pounds. He's kind of big. Rafael found Leo in Pasadena 10 years ago. Yeah. So there's no gain in this stage, and there's no gain in this stage. Wonder if we got a shorted detector diode here loading this down because. Fire. Usage subject to approval. Same data possible. Merchant services provided by Payment Tech LLC. Wonder if that detector is bad. And yes, I am flipping the detector on and off on the probe. Seems like the IF is waking up all of a sudden. I don't get it. Maybe this would show up better. So, this is before the detector diode. And the number one reason. Don't miss a snap, shot, goal, or game. That's after. Maybe the detector diode is bad. It's a note here because it looks like... It looks like uh, he had been soldering on this. You have to be very careful about getting germanium diodes hot with a soldering iron. It kills them. The same with germanium transistors. You have to get on it and off of it without getting the diode hot. Uh, silicon diodes, it really doesn't seem to matter. And yes, you can replace this with a silicon diode without any real noticeable performance degradation. I'm sure there would be some on a, a scope, but or test equipment. But for a little radio like this, you're not going to notice the difference if you switch out the germanium detector. You could just put a one in nine sixteen signal diode in there; It'll work fine. Well, I took the diode out and checked it with a diode check, and it it seems okay, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. I fired it back up and we're up to the back to the same thing with the dead IF again. Five seven ninety seven to sixty five four seven. The fifty five inch Samsung three seventy seven. These the fifty five for twelve ninety eight. The sixty five sixteen ninety eight are lowest price ever. The seventy seven. OLED deals on every OLED TV. So it's like the IF slowly wakes up. Maybe we should look at the voltage on this. So I have the full 9 volts here, and then on the base, I have nothing, and on the emitter, I have nothing, and according to the schematic, I'm supposed to have a quarter of a volt on the base and a tenth of a volt on the emitter. And that voltage comes from here. So maybe this capacitor or maybe that resistor. That 200K is right here. That capacitor is right here. And we, we literally have 9 volts on one side of the 200K and like 0 on the other. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to investigate this right here, that capacitor and resistor. And again, I'm measuring this voltage right here. It's supposed to be a quarter of a volt. And there's nothing, and we have a 200K and a uh, 5 microfarad there. Just for the entertainment value, let's look at... Interesting. The second IF gets its bias... The second IF transistor gets its bias from the driver transistor, and if, since this primary is open, you're not going to get any emitter voltage here, so you're not going to get any bias on the second IF transistor. Interesting. It's all a big loop. 
this right here is why I say always say invest in a schematic don't waste your time trying to figure something like this out because I would have never intuitively known that the second IF got its bias voltage from the audio driver transistor had I not had this schematic just just invest the 20 bucks in the schematic the amount of time it'll save is more than worth it well the 3900 has gone to 1.2 so that's this right here this 3900 so it's pulling voltage off uh, through the volume control right up through here to ground and it comes over here to our 200k so it's sort of the voltage divider you have the 200k feeding voltage and then you have the 3900 and the volume control pulling it down to ground well not ground but you know what I mean so that one dropped by quite a bit would that kill it I don't think so well I'm being an idiot I was on diode check it's actually 4.2 so the 200 K has gone up to 220 and the 3.9 has gone to 4.2 not a problem before I go any further and make myself look any stupider let me try a couple of these and I'm just going to parallel them right across the top. We'll start with the driver. Let me see which one of these makes the most sense. Okay, so this one here looks good for this. I got the primary of this tied in. Let's see if we get like any gain through the IF now that it has bias on the second IF. Doesn't look like it, does it? Stand by. Alright, yes, now we have all the way to the audio driver. Sounds awesome, doesn't it? Sounds like it's in a tube. Alright, what I did is I hooked the transformer up to the driver and to the one side the one transistor that's driving the good side of the audio output and the radio's working. Not very well because it's running single-ended and it's got the wrong transformers and and they're paralleled and and we've got a huge huge impedance issues because all the paralleled coils and uh, open crap. There's also an issue in this IF right here. I don't know if it's a transistor or what. Yeah, well, maybe if you could count the votes. Maybe if you could start by counting the votes and not tweaking the hell out of everything. Biden is now in Indonesia. It is his third stop. 
can't believe in this market that there's just absolutely nothing to listen to on AM radio. FM is pretty much garbage anyway, except maybe K-Jazz. That's the only one I can stand about right now. Uh, the NPR music shows are okay, but I, I just can't stand the rest of it. Um, and, of course, all the commercial stuff. I, It's hard to believe that there's not one decent independent music station that, that's not automated in this market. You know, it's just... It's, it's really sad the way what it's turning into as it uh, probably descends into quietness anyway there's the there's the kind of diagnosis of this thing I uh, sent the owner a message and asked him if he's just looking for one of these little radios to listen to pretty much nothing worth listening to and I'll see if I could get him another give him another radio maybe I don't know this thing is a little bit too far gone for uh, what I would consider worth fixing when you can pick these things up for five six bucks so I still believe we might have a problem here in the first IF um, uh, this is open This coil right here is open, causing no voltage to get to here and no bias to get to the second IF. This is the one we substituted with uh, this little guy right here and got it working. One of these coils is open, so it's just running single, single sided right now. That's why it sounds like crap. So it needs both audio output transformers needs the one that drives a speaker and it needs a driver and it probably needs an issue here addressed it could be a bad capacitor there it could be a bad transistor or it could be something else but I'm not gonna investigate into this because Usually obtaining these is just not worth the time to where they'll actually fit in this little compact space and all the leads match up. I mean, they'd have to be the exact same transformer, and I'm not going to try and take them apart and fix them. Hope they're broken right where it connects to the... Yeah, it's too small. Earlier in the video I mentioned an LM386 module which is a little tiny little audio amp board that uses a surface mount LM386 chip. Well, you could do that but you'd have to figure out the bias of the second IF that comes off the audio driver. So it wouldn't be very easy and clear cut just to throw an LM386 module board in here, a little, a little daughter board, clean all this stuff off and stick it there. Wouldn't quite be that simple. You'd have to do some experimentation after you got the issue with the first IF sorted out. Vintage Soviet e 2 2 AM long wave radio. Uh, doesn't work. Let's see if we can fix it. This is a very compact. The case is in good shape. I got some requests for transistor radio repairs and this thing was uh, sitting on my to-do bench. It's the price, right? And um, I want to take a second. I got an uh, email asking about the little battery setup that I use. So I want to take a second to explain that, which is this. You see me use this quite a bit and um, what these are is these are lithium iron phosphate batteries uh, L-I-P-O-F-E not not lithium ion and the, there's a difference there lithium ion battery fully charged is 4.1 volts discharged is 3 volts these are fully charged at 3.6 volts and sit at 3.3 volts and they're what you call hard knee as they discharge, they don't discharge like this. 
they sit flat at 3.3 volts and then when they're dead they go like that so there's no slope there's no discharge slope they're just flat and they drop so they're kind of an ideal battery these don't have as much capacity as standard lithium batteries but they are ideal for what i'm using them for now you used to could buy these off of ebay and amazon but both of those big tech is censoring us constantly they stopped the sale of individual cells so i'm sure you can find these online somewhere a lithium battery seller and you do need a special charger for them uh, i use a computerized charger for uh like remote vehicles or what do you call those yeah remote like drones and just a universal charger but anyway yeah I, I it troubles me to think of the things I used to could buy and I, I have just totally gone away and I don't want to start a rant but I was just starting to get into substituting Soviet horizontal output tubes in televisions and then I lost all the components and radios and stuff I was getting from the Russian Federation and now Ukraine is pretty much cut off so it's a constant decline of uh, resources lately and it's just a bunch of censorship stuff you know big tech is the new the new fascist uh, shadow government that's controlling what we do it's it's I could go on a, a rant all day but that's not what this is about um, so they're 3.3 volts per cell so they're kind of ideal for radios because radios are usually well 4.5 6 9 or 12 volts so that's what we got here now I added a like an 80 milliamp wheat lamp there and I use a little milliamp meter here so if I connect this you'll see the wheat lamp this is just a current current limiting light bulb just like when you're doing a dim bulb on a old tube gear so the diodes, since it's 3.3 volts per cell, the diodes basically drop it a half a volt per diode. So you can see there, that's our current limiting. So someone asked me about this battery pack. That's what they are. They're lithium iron phosphate cells. Yeah, LIFE, lithium iron phosphate, L-I-F-E. And you need a special charger. And that's probably why they banned the sale of them, because people were getting hurt. Um, they will fit in place of a standard lithium, but they're not the same chemistry, so the voltage and current is different. Anyway, let's power up this radio here and see what it does. I believe it's totally quiet. So why do I use batteries instead of a bench power supply? Because I like to do a lot of work in the field, and so I just have this, and it's small and convenient, and I don't have to sacrifice a plug or whatever you want to say. Um, that's why I prefer to just use batteries, because I, when I go out to the desert or whatever, I just take this setup with me. Okay, let's see. So we do have current draw. But we have absolutely no sound whatsoever. Not a pop, not a click, no hiss. Looking at the inside, and this looks pretty virginy. I don't think the screws have ever been out of this. This looks very low use. Most of these things are just done. So we got a bunch of electrolytics here, but I really don't think it's an electrolytic you would still generally get a little pop or squeak or something when you turn the power on start by measuring the speaker 
Well, that's interesting. I put the voltmeter across the speaker. I got four, four and a half volts across the speaker and no noise. Well, that, that uh, diagnosis, we got a bad speaker, but why do we have four volts across the speaker? That's like a shorted transistor or something. Okay, if this is the proper schematic, which I'm not totally sold on that it is, so it shows two diodes in here. Uh, there's a capacitor there. So that would suggest that that capacitor is very leaky. Looks like we got a date code of 1071 here. Speaker looks so good. Why the hell is it open? Test speaker. but otherwise dead. Gee, I'm glad, I'm glad. Glad they can figure that out at a prestigious university. Are there capacitors in here? Let's go after this with the signal tracer because it seems like it's deaf. It doesn't seem like a capacitor issue, but the signal tracer will tell us all. So what do we have here? We have a converter, converter transistor, first IF, second IF right here, detector diode. Then this, these are our amplifier right here. Here, 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 here. So, I could sell your data and we'll do it for free. Activate the Discover app. Discover.com slash online privacy protection. Are you kidding me? Gas prices are. What's that? It's a free app that pays you back for every gallon of gas or diesel you buy. That doesn't quite make sense. You should have one with no signal, one with a little signal, and one with higher signal. That's like the base. Start putting money back into your wallet with a free app from Claim Your Earned Cash. Just it's almost like the emitter is not good. I wonder if that's bad. Promo. 
41 at a rally in Texas. against him. Republican Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy says if his party regains control of Congress, he would use negotiations to force cuts to federal programs. McCarthy believes he can its current trajectory. It's like no gain across either one of those. She supports this strategy. I sit on oversight am I on the connected to the right thing here I think so it's not that complicated is it of oil from the Yep, drain it out, baby. Suck it dry. Huh. Pretty bizarre. Let's do some DC voltage checks here. So we got 7 volts there. We got uh, 200 millivolts there. And we got 491 millivolts there. That does not look right. What the hell? Well, maybe. Maybe that's the base. So the base is 500 millivolts and the emitter is 200 millivolts. That would make sense. Uh, okay, let's do this one because we should have about 200 millivolts between base and emitter, right? Germanium goodness. So right there we have 6.78 volts. Right there we have 1 volt. And right... Right there we have 1.2 volts, so that looks right. Measuring between base and emitter on this one we have uh, exactly 200 millivolts. Measuring between base and emitter on this one we have, if I could get on it, I have 233 millivolts, so that's right. Those transistors do not look, the IF transistors do not look bad, but there's definitely a lack of gain in here, so we either got one of these orange things is shorted or a bad IF can. I'm going to break this off and call this part one an analysis video. This is a really nice example of one of these. Usually these things are really beat down and used up. This one's not. This one's in really good shape. And I was looking at the wrong schematic. I had a schematic for a later version. So I'm going to break this off. And uh, I left myself a note here. I need to find a speaker. These speakers are not, these are metric speakers. I don't know what it is, three centimeters or some four something like that so I'm gonna try and find a speaker these metric speakers the, the standard ones that are for sale in the local parts store 
don't quite fit in these radios and I want to fix this right so I need to find a schematic need to find a speaker and um, I made myself a note and we'll come back to this sometime in the future so we'll just call this an analysis for repair.